never knew that this sort of company could go for an IPO. None of what we say should be taken as financial advice as usual. Now guys, if you're really interested in building a six to seven figure portfolio, we've got the perfect solution for you. Head over in the comment section or the description to sign up for our free masterclass where you can get all these proven steps to achieve it. All right, Jonathan. So this is a company that I have some sort of experience in. Mm. Not because I run one, but because uh, I have relatives who are into, into this business, business mm. somewhat, not exactly, okay. but no thing or two. And uh, but maybe let's begin and clarify exactly what they do and which part of the value chain they are in, because people tend to think that you know when they hear what this company is selling that they have certain assumptions about mm. it. So maybe let's start. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh. But before that, the IPO IPO details, okay. right? So one million market cap. Yes, it's a very small so company. About 19 times earnings. Uh, I think by the time we, we post this video, uh, you cannot subscribe already. So yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so. But you know, many of you all asked this and um, we initially didn't want to because we felt it was a bit boring. But then when we saw the numbers, it got a little bit interesting. Yes. So uh, yeah, anyway, by the time this comes out, it's too late. But you know, keep watching. Okay, so the bus- they are in the business of uh, processing the bird nest edible bird nest specifically mm-hmm. uh, and they are specialized in processing this RUCEBN. So what is RUCEBN? It is raw and clean edible bird nest. Okay. Yeah, so there's actually two types of uh, different type of bird nest. One is the unclean, one is the clean type. Yeah. So what is the difference between these two, right? Uh, raw and unclean is basically they need to go through another further processing by the manufacturers or even the traders. So it's more of like a B2B bis- kind of business. Whereas for raw clean, you can actually sell directly to the consumers. Yeah. Yeah, because it's already to clean. Give you a sense, yeah. usually raw and unclean will have a lot of feathers. Uh, some sort, yeah. Minimal feathers uh, is what yeah. they say. Uh. And so by the time, you, most people when they see bird nest in the package, it's really a bit yellow. Mm. So that's really processed already. Typical bird nest actually white in color. Mm, yes, correct. Right. And so yeah, and then yeah. there's like feathers and all that. Yeah. And so what they do is they will like hire. I mean, the first round of uh, cleaning will be that they hire, let's say, certain mates, right? So they will take the forceps and all that to yep, yep, take out one by one. Take, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very heavy. I tried it later. myself. Okay, I just two bird nests. It takes half an hour and. <sighs> Let's just say this is not for guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'm not gonna go through much, but so basically their customers are traders, processors, and even manufacturers of uh, edible bird nests. Uh, and yeah, the products is basically, they call it Guan Tian Ban and Cui series. Okay, so uh, this is the capacity right now. Uh, the, the current annual produ- production capacity is about 32 uh, K kg. Uh, per year and right now the utilization rate is around like 72.8 percent uh and then uh they are actually projecting that their annual product processing capacity will increase by double after they go ipo so uh, they are trying to expand this their production because uh in order to like meet the demand from china so majority of their customer actually comes from uh the prc la. and uh so the employees is right now they are quite a uh, small organization size uh, about like 25 of them actually 25 out of 52 are in the processing uh, side and then the remaining is more of like an admin procurement yeah. yeah human resources all the stuff okay so this is some of the other info they have a process in-house at uh, Malacca and their IPO is basically they're trying to expand to maybe East Malaysia uh, in order to get more of these uh, bird nests from those swiftlet houses is what they call and they source raw bird nests from 18 approved suppliers uh, that has about 224 swiftlet houses and then uh what's important for these 18 approved suppliers is that they actually have to have this thing called the my gap certificate uh in order to actually supply them the uh bird nest to them so it's actually a very stringent process and they also claim that uh it needs to go through a lot of regulation both from malaysia and also from china uh, yeah, it's not a slim peel, like you can just op- set up a Swiftlet house that then you can collect burst nets and sell it to uh, China or even yeah, the locals. Yeah. And then um, w- 
a cool interesting thing is that Malaysia is the only country that is recognized by China for the exportation of uh, RUCEBN. So other countries, for example, like Indonesia or Thailand, they can only export the clean edible bird nest, not raw unclean. So we are the only country that can export this. Basically, raw they doubt unclean. other countries uh, swiftly. Quality, yeah, kind, kind of. <laughs> uh, to, to give people a sense, I think there are only two other countries doing this, right? This would be Indonesia and Thailand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Correct. So it's a bit like palm oil. I think we were having this discussion. Uh, this bird nest industry is, mm. it, it, it mirrors palm oil in that there's really only two big countries, Indonesia and Malaysia. Yeah. And then uh, partly because of our weather and all that. And then uh, even the, the ratio or the percentage of uh, the supply is also roughly the same, right? Mm. About two thirds coming from Indonesia, Indonesia and yes. one third from Malaysia, similarly like palm oil. Yes, exactly. And then uh, previously, last time, a lot of their customer actually comes from Hong Kong. But then recently they changed it to PRC China because mm. China actually charge at a premium price. Like they allow them to sell that at a price premium of about 15 to 20% increase. Yeah. So yeah, that's why they made a shift to China. And also China is the largest uh, consumer for bird nests. And uh, the difference between the product that they actually serve, right? So if you remember, they have the Guan series, the um, Guan, Tian, Pan, and Cui. So mm. Guan is more of like a higher quality. So why is it highly high quality? It's because the color, one of it. One, okay. Yeah, Guan. So it is white in color. Then I believe the shape also is like a cup. And then it's like not fragmented. It's yeah. like not like all around. It's not a mess. Uh. So those kind of like um, products can actually command higher premium at about 20 to 30%. Uh, where and then they are selling at around like four thousand to five point five thousand per kg. So yeah. that is actually a huge uh premium uh, in terms of the Guan series. But then they don't really sell a lot of Guan. They sell a lot of the second uh higher premium, which is uh, Tian. So yeah, you can see that this is the revenue by product range. You can see majority wow. of the revenue comes from Tian. Uh, Ban and Chui. It's more tian, of Tian. You mean the yeah Tian. So, so it's like the sky. Sky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. What's what's Guan the meaning? Guan is more like a royalty royal right, right, right. yeah official like some government official uh, yeah, yeah something like that la. yeah and then uh ban and so is more of like a low tier one uh. so <clears> obviously <throat> the quality of these uh bird nest is not really that great as compared to these two and then majority of their revenue actually 98 percent of their revenue actually comes from china at the moment uh so this is some of the unique economics um this is the bird nest shipment that they actually export to chi China in terms of kg so you can see that the numbers is actually like more than tripled or even like quadruple over the past like 20, from 2019 to 2021 and then there's like a small slowdown in 2022 because uh, obviously China have this zero covid policy yeah. so it's actually pretty hard for them to export but then right now it's like going back to normal yeah so you can expect this to number to go up in the future and then this is the average revenue from the China per kg, right? So you can see that the average selling price is actually kind of like a trickling down. Uh, I mean, one thing to say also is because they don't really sell a lot of these guan kind of like uh, high quality bird nest that can actually command a premium. Uh, they sell a lot of these tian, although the quality also is a lot, but then also uh, the selling price is not as high or the margin is not as good as guan. Uh so to speak so uh and also i believe that uh there is some sort of competition which also kind of affect the average revenue that they sell to china as well hey guys before we move on if you're someone looking to level up their stock investing skills and you need a lot more guidance we do have a one-on-one -on -one program called the mentorship program if you're interested you can apply it in the comment section or the description Okay, so those is the business. Now we look at the shareholders and peers. Uh, very simple shareholders post IPO shareholding. So you can see that Mr. Levin Chen is the executive chairman. He owns about 33 point, eh, sorry, Levin Chen is the CEO of the company. He owns about 33.58%. Uh, Mr. Lee Wei Kong, I believe this is the C, uh, COO. I'm, I'm not sh too sure, but then he's part of the board. And then Liu Chong Leong is the executive chairman. Basically all of them, uh, inside this shareholder list, they all have like experience in the bird nest industry mm. for yeah. Okay, so uh, we're going through one by one. This is MLCL, which is the previous one. They own about uh, 11.19%. So if you notice that there is two shareholders inside this company that has related 
um, relationship with the board of directors in my MBN. So Miss Chua Li Yok and Liu Jun Yu are the spouse and daughter of Liu Chong Leong. So Liu Chong Leong is the executive chairman for uh, my MBN. So there is some sort of like a family relationship inside this company, uh, inside this business. And then also another one, which is Gentle Rainbow. Gentle Rainbow, I think they own about yeah, 7.46%. Leverage yeah. Chan, what name? Yes, and then also there is some sort of like related party relationship. So Miss Hu Hong Ti is the mother of Levin Chen, which is the CEO of the company. And then the he this one Miss Mister Chen Wei Biao is the son of Hu Hong Ti, which is also the brother of Levin Chen. This is a very classic uh, Chinese name, gentle yeah. rainbow. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like a hidden dragon, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So this is the directors. So Liu Chong Leong is the executive chairman. He's currently 62 years old. He, previously, he was a construction related kind of like industry. Then he changed to swiftlet farming business. Mm. And then, yeah, he discovered bird mess. And then later on, he actually did bought M, uh, MBN, which is part of the subsidiary of my MBN, uh, with his former partner to do property development. But then they failed to do. And then later on, they he approached like, Mr. Levin Chen and also Li Weikong to actually export RUCVN to China. And this is the remaining uh, three directors that is quite important, I think. Uh, so one is Levin Chen is the CEO. Uh, he's 44 years old and he's, I believe he has like an aerospace engineering uh, degree. Mm. Yeah, but then he didn't like pursue like any job related that is uh, engineering to do engineering. So he straight away, once he graduate, he helped his family business that is also involved in trading of bird nests. And then in 2012, he left his family business and he wanted to start his own. Then uh, after that, he left his own uh, venture and then he joined Mr. Liu to create my MBN. Yeah, and then he owns about 33%. And then this remaining two, Mr. Li Wei Kong and Mr. Qin Chi Chia, also have like involved in RUCBN or bird nest related businesses before. Okay, so this is the industry uh, in Malaysia. So right now there's about 44 processing plants that have this certification. So this, they, they call it the VHM GVHP. I won't really go through what it's all about, but basically you need this certificate in order to uh, export any types of animal products. And also it is kind of like, they have to like run through a lot of uh, these quality control and also see whether your food is can like export to other countries. Uh. So you need to have all of these certificate in order to export and sell your products overseas. Uh, and then they also have like 41 companies uh, approved by GACC. This one also it is an important kind of step in order to export your bird nest product to China. And what is interesting is that only three out of these 41 companies are involved in RUCB EBN. Yeah, so the reason mm. why actually my MBM, uh, I believe when I was like watching the briefing, right? Uh, he actually have, they actually have the opportunity to go and do uh, processing for the raw clean edible bird nest, but mm. they decided to choose the unclean one because it is an untapped market. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's why they go to unclean. Then there's only like very few competition. And then, uh, based on what the CEO say, his gut feeling of the market share that they're exporting this right is about like thirty to forty percent. It's not facts. Yeah, that's yeah. just pure his gut feeling. I mean, it makes sense. Right, cost three company only, so thirty percent, thirty percent, thirty percent. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and then um, these two Sunyang Berhad are the competitors for the uh, RUC EBN export to China. Uh, yeah, that's just uh, information for you to know. And then uh, this is the peers. So there's actually a lot, a lot of Sun Yan Berhad that is doing this kind of bird nest uh, exporting business. Uh, and then if you look at over here, there is a company called this Ming Feng, I believe. Ming Feng is a subsidiary of Ines. It is also listed in Busan, Malaysia, but they are currently listed in Leap Market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and I'm not sure why they put the 2021 numbers because Ines actually reported uh, 2022, but although it's unaudited. Lah. So, Ines numbers, are bigger numbers or smaller? yes bigger. Okay, okay. Uh, I yeah, believe maybe that's why la, that's Yeah, why. yeah, maybe also. Yeah. Uh, and I believe Ming Feng, if I remember correctly, is about hundred million uh, in terms of revenue. But then the margin also is more or less the same as uh MBN and right. Enterprise. Yeah, you can do the math lah. So it's like assuming this is fourteen percent, eight and six percent, and then you can calculate what is their gross profit profit before tax and after tax. But yeah, very I would say it's not really a high margin kind of like business uh. 
Okay, so now we have a look at the numbers. Right now, they are, everything is kind of like growing because of China reopening. Uh, margins also is kind uh, is also improving at the moment, although is there's a slight drop in the profit before tax as well, profit after tax. Uh, cash, they are in a very net cash position, uh, very healthy, so nothing to comment on about that. Cash flow wise, uh, cash flow is actually not that great because um, I believe uh, they don't really like collect everything up front once they sell it to their China customer. So I believe the operating cash flow to PAT ratio in 2022 is about like 40 to 50%. Uh, it, it does, that just tells you that they don't really collect every single cash once they actually sell that product to uh, China. And then uh, right now they also kind of like spending their a little bit of business expansion uh, to double their production because to meet the China demand. And then uh, right now they are in a healthy free cash flow position as well. And you notice I didn't include dividend because they didn't pay out any single dividend for the past few years. Uh, our IC also has been very high. I mean, this is a service-based business, so you kind of expect this kind of number. Uh, we shall see whether they can sustain at this level or not in the future. Uh, ratio also has been pretty good. Um, right now, the trade receivable has reduced from 29 to six days. Uh, obviously, why it is very quickly is because uh, this sort of product is kind of like a perishable. You have to like straight away, once you do the processing and everything, right? you have to straight away just uh, sell it to your manufacturer to give them to process further process and everything. So to ensure that the quality is still good. Uh, payables also is very fast because when you collect the bird, raw bird nest from your supplier, you have to straight away pay them already. So yeah, that's another thing. And then uh, inventory turnover is just there. Uh, yeah, pretty normal kind of like uh, turnover days. Okay, so IPO proceeds, I'm not gonna go through every single one, but just to sum up, they're trying to double up, they're, they're going to double up their facility. Processing. Uh, yeah, processing facility. And also they want to set up a few bird nest collection centers in East Malaysia. So right now, more most of their bird nest collection are in Peninsula. Yeah. Uh, on, I believe only there's like one only in Sabah, but they want to set up more. I mean, mainly in Malacca, right? Uh, Malacca, yeah, mainly in Malacca. Uh, but then because they know that East Malaysia, there's a lot of like swiftlet houses and also, yeah. So that's, that's why they're trying to like expand over there. Uh, and then they also want to diversify their product. Uh, they're trying to like uh, also expand into selling the raw, clean edible bird nest. Uh, and then the remaining is basically just to buy more raw bird nest, working capital and listing expenses. So this is one of the news is that uh, they want to double up. I already mentioned this repeated a lot of times already. So they want to double their annual processing capacity from 32,000 to about 73.7 thousand. And they also want to increase their storage capacity from 1.8K to about 4.6K uh, kg. And also they want to diversify their product displacement store to actually serve the halal ready to drink bird nest product. I believe this one is, uh, would, will be there once they actually diversify into the raw clean edible bird nest. I'm not too sure, but that is my what I think. Uh, and then the difference between raw unclean and raw clean, obviously there's the average selling prices is more higher in the raw clean because it is actually already further processed and they cleaned it very clean. That means there's like no feathers and whatnot. Uh, that's why they can charge at the average, average selling prices of a premium at about seven to 8,000 per kg as compared to your raw and clean, the average selling price is about 4.5K uh, per kg. Okay, so uh, a quick one, their mode is uh, geographical advantage. So actually this type of swiftlet, uh, they cannot be seen in countries that have four season. Uh, I mean, there is swiftlet in those country, but then they don't really have like the swiftlet that they want uh, that they build the bird nest in the cave and then that kind of quality and whatnot so that's why the southeast asia region there's a geographical advantage already uh and most of the china i believe in the ming dynasty already uh when i i cannot remember who but somebody sent someone to southeast asia to find like a product oh. that they can eat uh. it's like way way back already as like the one they knew about uh, it, you know? they knew about the bird nest yeah so they came to indonesia they came to malaysia myanmar and every place to find bird nest uh. and then um another mode is that malaysia is the only country that can export both this the raw unclean okay. and raw clean to china but yeah. then this may not be the same in the future i don't know whether china would 
decide to change their protocol to allow other countries to export as well. So I think I think yeah. <clears throat> to add also is it's a uh, it's seen as a luxury product and yes somehow in the minds of a lot of Chinese people like they like all the exotic stuff yeah I think that they can't take and where I I'm not too sure about the actual health benefits because that's how it's been marketed right yeah but that's you know it's health benefits and uh, it's the it's a bit like shark's fin soup right is that like how much benefit there but then it's the world's most expensive soup yeah right uh, if I remember like on Shopee if you buy just a normal packet shark's fin soup is like 50 ringgins um, wow. you know, or higher mm. so I think that's one advantage right it's an advantage that you know because people just believe it's a bit like feng shui like that, right everyone knows it doesn't make sense but because people believe it therefore if you buy a property make sure your property has good feng shui yep. similarly uh, that is the the beauty of uh, bird nest in addition to the geography yes exactly uh, catalyst I'm not going to go through a lot it's basically just China and Vietnam's bird nest consumption if it continues yeah. to increase then it's good another one is the raw clean edible bird nest because that one is a higher average selling price so definitely revenue and profit will be improving in the future and then this is the uh, growth forecast for edible bird nest in Malaysia going forward which is very optimistic you can see that on average, it's about like 34% Kager from 2022 to 2027. Yeah. Uh, risks, uh, obviously there's a few one, which is the availability of good grade bird nest. If let's say there is less, less uh, bird nest start to build in the Swiftlet house, definitely will be less revenue for my MBN. Yeah, but I'll, I'll add that this is not as big, yeah. mainly because in the upstream, which is where the, the bird nest production is happening, there's actually oversupply so to find a good quality, I wouldn't say oversupplier, but there's just a lot of uh, different houses. And mm. like if you recall the math, we have only, they have only like four competitors, which three, right? Three for RUCEBN, yeah. For the processing and the marketing, right? Of, yeah, processing of this, of this yeah. Product. Um, do they do marketing? I think they do marketing. Uh, they no, just processing, I believe. Just process, yeah. okay. So you can see there's four, but then the upstream, which is the people managing these Swiftlet houses is 225, 24, sorry. So you can see that there's a, there's not a lack of supply for this. So to find good quality bird is actually quite easy. And now the reason why is, is that to get these birds in the house, uh, it's actually very luck based because mm. you don't know what makes the bird not want to be in the house. Yeah right and then the weather change they don't like and there's no loyalty from the kids right the kids once they are born they fly off leave the nest there they don't necessarily come back mm. so you need to have uh, if, if you are the guy doing building the swift houses you basically have to pray lah, right that you know the birds like best, yeah but if you are on the other side which is where um, uh my mbn my my mbn, MBN is is um, you get to choose, right? So if let's say this geography in Pahang is not doing uh, too good, it's fine. There's others somewhere in Johor or mm. in wherever la, that they have these Swiftlet houses. Mm. So that is one thing that why the risk is for me not as big to yeah. get good quality birdness. Mm. Unless the whole peninsula is bad or let's say it's, I don't know, Indonesia export there their their fog and their uh, smoke you know that that causes all the birds to die or whatever yeah that, that one is more of like an external kind of like controller right. that, that external factor that we Correct. cannot control so yeah. they get to choose my my bmb yeah and yeah so that is the minor risk and then the other one is more of a renewal of gacc that one you have to have this certificate renewed every single every five years in order to export your product to china uh, and obviously, there's another one, which is China being the most, the major customer that is actually buying all of this product, right? There's actually a few instances in 2011 and 2015 where there's like a virus outbreak. Mm. I believe this one is like H1N1. The other one is more like a, I cannot remember, it's like a bird flu kind of related. That's why they temporarily banned the export of uh, products from Malaysia especially for bird nests to them, uh, that actually caused their revenue to shrink. So if let's say there's another virus outbreak, potentially it will kind of affect their business as well. And then the last one is like what you mentioned, the belief that it's good start to fade away. If let's say 
uh, like there's like some sort of like scientists actually did a study or experiment and they found out that bird nest doesn't really cure oh, or enhance your immune system. That has been done already, you know, like the, I mean, it's overstated lah, the, yeah, 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 the yeah. benefits, right? But at the end of the day, people, so this is, again, this is unique to the Chinese mindset, right? Mm. So if you tell them that to cure your cancer, you need to go through some sort of chemotherapy, you need to take certain pills or that, they're usually more skeptical. First of all, the cost is higher, so straight away skeptical already. Then the second thing is, you know, or Western medicine or whatever, they don't even care, right? But then you tell them, hey, you eat this particular thing from the jungle in don't know where, uh, they, they say, yeah, just try. Yeah, just yeah. Try. You know? And to be fair, I mean, bird nest it doesn't cause a lot of harm to, yeah. to what I see. And they can taste good in certain contexts, right? So that 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 is the one thing that I think also will be quite hard to go away for mm. Chinese people. Uh, especially China, Chinese people. And yeah. this is unique to Chinese, Chinese people because no other areas in the world really care about bird nest. Yeah. Nobody is eating it because everybody knows outside of China At, that yeah. it's complete nonsense mm. in terms of the superior health benefits. Yeah. Exactly. But it's great as a dessert. As our thumbnail suggested, right? Yes, yes, it is, it is. <laughs> yeah, but those are the four risks that I think uh, that my ambience, uh, that they have in terms of the potential risks. All right, guys, enjoying the video so far? If the answer is yes, remember, like, comment, subscribe. And as far as comments go, if you don't like the video, do let us know as well. We always take all sorts of feedback, as long as they're constructive. Uh, this is just a final takeaway. Number one, you have to know that this company is very related to China. They have to rely on China's consumption of bird nest. Number two is the export for China. So yeah, if you don't know already, uh, we mentioned from the start that Indonesia's market share in terms of exporting to China is about 64%. We are about 35%. We are the second uh, largest. Yeah. And then the last one is Enex is actually currently trading at so around 11 times. Trading higher. Yes, them. correct. So my MBN is kind of like a high side for their financial year 2020 do but we shall see whether post IPO, even though they have less revenue right yep so we shall see whether they can actually sustain their valuation in the future yeah so that's about it for my mb yeah guys you know again maybe you know this many times today but we have this thing called fire pro ignore the thing on top we do not have uh the master class anymore it's yes just but i believe the, there is the recording for yes. it is going to be out if you yeah. like the recording uh you can you know request for us through email yeah Okay, ask us through email or maybe Instagram messages or even YouTube comments. We'll pass it to you for people who want to invest in the second half of 2023 confidently. Then, of course, we have uh, Fire Pro. Fire Pro is designed for you to shortcut your journey to find investment uh, ideas. Yep. And uh, the, we do it through very short and sweet reports that take you no more than 10 to 15 minutes to read. Uh, also for Fire Pro, we are having right now a special discount. Yes. Right. Uh, thirty-three percent off. This will end on the nineteenth. No, uh, on the thirteenth. Thirteenth. Sorry. Yes. Thirteenth of July. So. I mean, if you want to extend, uh. <laughs> TikTok, TikTok. Okay. Uh, you know, on the right we have the performance that uh, we have achieved so far in the span of slightly under ten months. Mm. And if you want to get a sense of what. Uh, these reports look like do check out our free sample if you like it hope to see you in the program and even if you're not thank you for always support well first of all thank you for staying all the way until the end of this video and of course thank you for supporting us all this time i look forward to seeing you in the next video peace Bye.